to my new space. It's still a work in progress, but I did mention in a previous video that I was going to be moving, and here I am in my moved place. I finally get to sit on the floor in front of a bookcase. It's really fun. Uh, <laughs> I don't, it might change setup-wise still a little bit, but this is where we're at for now. This is my new space. And I'm here to tell you some thoughts about what I'm doing for March. So, for my March TBR, I don't have anything super set. I'm still, like, moving in, getting everything set up and whatnot. So I don't have, like, the idea that I should make a big, huge reading plan for this month. That seems a little silly. So, instead, here we are. I have a couple of readathons that I'm going to participate in the month, and then instead of like following entirely the timeline for them, I think I'm just going to extend them for the whole month. Um, I was watching Kailani Simply Me, and she was talking about how she's helping to host the, uh, what is it called? The season-a-thon, read-a-thon, and they've got their, like, spring version that's going to be from March 15th to March 21st, and I, I don't know that I can read that much in just a single week while I'm still finalizing moving stuff, so I'm going to extend that all out throughout the month. I'm going to follow their prompts, but do it within the whole month <laughs> instead of just during that week. And then also Becca's Bagabalathon is coming back for a 48 hour session um, on the 21st, 20th to the 21st. So I'm going to be reading all through that, but obviously if I don't finish the 20th and the 21st, I'll I'll just keep reading <laughs> those books then too. And especially with hers, she even said within the readathon as she was explaining the rules and stuff, it's perfectly legit to have already started books for it and to count them towards the prompts. So that's part of what I'm going to do. Obviously with that one, we've only gotten two of the prompts so far and the rest will be given throughout the readathon. <laughs> so I can't completely plan a whole TBR for that one yet anyways. So there will be more books coming than what I've got laid out that I want to read so far. <laughs> but that's just life anyways. Even when I set really huge TBRs, I almost always end up reading things outside of it, if for no other reason than I listen to a lot of audiobooks at work. And I generally don't have electronic audiobooks of everything that I have put on my TBR, so I just find other things. <laughs> if you saw my February TBR, then you kind of have seen how I can sometimes follow pretty close to it and sometimes if you look at some of the other months I don't at all. <laughs> um, I will link that down below. I've got a little TBR tracking Excel thing that I've been doing and I'll put that down below in this one because I have this month to show my plans on and then you can also look back. It's got February and January on it and you can kind of see some of the other things I've been reading this year too. Anyways, let's hop into things a little more fully. So, for the season-a-thon reading prompts that I've got, uh, the first prompt was spring cleaning and to read a book that has been on your shelf for a very long time. So what I've picked for this one is The Jade Flute, which is a book of Chinese poems and prose. I could not tell you how long I've had this book. I'm pretty sure I found it at a thrift store and was like, ooh, that sounds fun. And I picked it up and I haven't read it yet, but it's really short and I love poetry and prose poetry, especially that's been translated from another language. Sounds really interesting. So uh, that's book number one. And since it's a short read, if I don't get through it, I'll be very disappointed in myself. But I mean, it's one of the books that's been on my shelf for a long time and I haven't read it yet, so I already kind of am. <laughs> but there's that one, is my first one. Then the second book that I've got, or well, the second prompt was Luck of the Irish and to pick a book with a green cover. So the one that I found for this is for Body and Other Stories. They said you could make the green whatever you wanted, so I figured this green ribbon on it works plenty for me. Some of the examples she was showing had like green on the spines or it'd be like there's a bunch of people on the cover and one happens to be in a green shirt or obviously something like the jade flute could also count because it's pretty much mostly green. So anyone can do whatever they want. But this is a short story anthology that I got from the library. I've been really into short stories and I really want to 
keep reading lots of short stories, so this will be a fun way to feel like hopefully I'm reading more than I am, too, as I'm still working on moving in and stuff. But since it's a short story collection, that means I'll be getting more stories, even if it's only a single book that I managed to get through. So there's that one. The next prompt is Over the Rainbow, and the kind of explanation of that is a fairy tale or classic retelling. I don't have any of those right now. I've got some books that are on hold at the library that might come in in time, so I might add on to that one and maybe actually try to read it within the official week span <laughs> of the season-a-thon, uh, read-a-thon if it comes in time, but I, I, I don't have anything to show for that one right now. And I think I have a couple different ones. I'm just kind of waiting to see what comes in on time for that one. But here we are. <laughs> That one I don't have anything for yet. The next prompt for the season-a-thon was Women's March, and for that one, the sort of extra description for it was to pick a book with a strong female character. So I was looking through my shelves, and I found this one, The Other Side of the Stars, uh, which looks like a library book, but is actually one that I bought at a bookseller. <laughs> because I do that a lot too. Um, but this one I was reading the back on and it's about a girl who finds herself in post-World War II America after her parents have died. She's an immigrant and she ends up in this arranged marriage and just like all that trauma and stuff to me reads is this is going to have to be a pretty strong girl to get through these things. So here's my strong female character. I don't know that she'll be like fighting bad guys or anything which is maybe what a lot of people would think of for a strong female character. But I think you can be a strong female in a lot of different ways. So that's my fulfilling of that prompt. And then the final one that they've got, I also don't have the physical book for this, but their prompt is Spring Break Bash, and to make it a buddy or group read. And then for the readathon, they're reading the semi-definitive list of worst nightmares, which I thought sounded like a really intriguing book and premise. So that one's on hold in the library, and that one I will probably also try to read within the span of March 15th through 21st, since I don't have it right now and I can't start it early anyways. <laughs> so there you go. All right. And then on to the Bookopolathon books that I want to read. So the two prompts or roles that we've gotten are to read a book with a dark cover or and or to read a fantasy. I don't know if I'm going to try to meet every single prompt. I've done that on past Bookopolathons, but again, since I'm going to be a little busy this month, and even though it's only a 48-hour one, sometimes you can find stuff and sometimes you can't. I don't know that I'm going to try to fit them all. However, for my first book, I do have something that fits both, and that is The Daughters of Ruin, which definitely has a dark cover because it's almost monochrome other than her really pretty dress and jewelry. And then it sounds like a fantasy. It's about some sisters who are princesses, there's a war in their kingdom, and then it kind of sounds like there might be like assassination attempts or something that are going on. They're like fighting amongst each other, trying to figure out who's going to be the ruler maybe is kind of the impression I'm getting from it. But it sounds fun. It definitely sounds like a fantasy. It's definitely got a dark cover. So at the very least, I've got the first two prompts for the Bookopolathon. So that'll be exciting. And if I happen to start it early because it looks like a really interesting book, and I might, then I won't get in trouble for it either because part of the rules for that are that you can have started it before the Bookopolathon starts. So... We'll see how that goes. But those are my March TBR plans. Let me know if you have any March TBR plans. If maybe you have a bit more of a robust TBR than I do this month. Since you don't have things like moving going on in your life or something. Um, but yeah, feel free to share your thoughts on any of these books. If you happen to have read any of them. Or any of the authors or anything like that and you have thoughts you want to share, feel free to share down below. If you have links to TBR videos, I love watching other people's TBR videos, so that kind of thing is welcome down below. Again, in the description, I'm going to put my TBR tracking that I'm using too, so if you're curious and kind of want to follow along how I do with this month with the fun readathon stuff going on, feel free to find that down below. And uh, I think that's all I've got for now. This is the Umlaut Harper signing out.